Your company is looking into possibly doing a cybersecurity risk assessment, which is a really smart idea to do, but you're probably wondering what are some of the common findings that come out of those things? What are some of the most common things that are kind of overlooked that, that are going on within a company? You're probably thinking that because, hey, I don't want this company to come in and go, and go, hey, you didn't even do that or kind of embarrass you by pointing some things out that you could have done very easily right away. So you're probably thinking that in advance. So I wanted to make a video series on common findings with cybersecurity risk assessments so that you can maybe watch the video and maybe fix a couple things right away before you go and pay for a cybersecurity risk assessment. I think it's great to do a risk assessment, don't get me wrong, um, but maybe you wanna just see some videos ahead of time on what are some common things that you can kind of knock off that are that are easy obviously if they're difficult maybe you need some some assessment steps or some consulting to come in and give you some tips on on tools to use and things to do and things like that or maybe dollar amounts to assign to certain risks and how much that's potentially going to cost your company things like that those are great ideas but I wanted to make a video series just kind of pointing out some common stuff that are that are obviously pointed out time and time again with different companies. So the framework that I decided to use for this is the CIS framework. And today we're gonna to be talking about asset inventory and control, which is control number one of the CIS framework. The reason I, cho I chose the CIS framework is just because it's simple. It's 18 different controls. There's a lot of different frameworks we could, we could use as a guideline for this video series, but obviously if I did something like the NIST framework and it has over 100 different controls, this video series would be way too long for me to do. So we're keeping it simple with the CIS framework and gonna talk about commonly overlooked areas within each of the 18 controls. So today, the video is the first control, which is asset, enterprise asset and inventory controls. But before I get too far ahead of myself, just really quick, if you want my recommendations on the best companies to use for a cybersecurity risk assessment, maybe just a handful of companies that maybe you should quote based on your company's requirements, your company's size, what frameworks you need to follow, things like that. Don't Google it, just reach out and contact me. Shoot me an email, give me a call. More information on that at the end of the video. Okay, so CIS control number one, inventory and control of enterprise assets. So within that control number one, what are some of the most overlooked things? Well, it's pretty simple with this one. A lot of companies simply don't have any inventory of the assets that they have, or they have a very minimal inventory. So that's number one that's pointed out all the time. So, and I'm sure that's something that, that if you're watching this video, you know already, you kind of have a lingering guilty feeling if you haven't really been keeping that good of a control of the inventory or if maybe you have been doing a pretty good job. So, but that's, that's usually the most commonly overlooked thing is that companies just have an inadequate way of inventorying enterprise assets. And obviously you can't protect what you don't know that you have. So it's pretty simple there. Or maybe somebody's just using an, a, an Excel spreadsheet and they don't update it on a regular basis. So those are prime ways that, that you know, threat actors can come in and compromise your network is find assets that maybe were just installed recently on the network and don't have the latest updates on them. So those are vulnerable right out of the gate. Or maybe there's some things that are logging onto the network that you don't even know about. You know, obviously shadow IT is, is a big thing. So maybe, you know, a lot of users typically are downloading things onto their phones, onto enterprise assets that you're not aware of, different applications that aren't secure, things like that. So an Excel spreadsheet is just kind of inadequate, but you know, obviously, ideally, you'd want to be using some type of software, but at the very least, maybe have an Excel spreadsheet that you periodically kind of go through and make snapshots and maybe you have some type of procedure written down that we take a network snapshot 
every once in a while. And this is difficult, obviously, because it's an ongoing dynamic process. You know, if you know, with users, they have mobile devices that are logging into the network and logging off the network. So they come and go on the network. So if you take one snapshot, you're not going to see every single asset that is possibly, you know, logging onto the network. You're going to have to do it periodically at, at some type of a time interval. So obviously, if you're a small company, you know, if you just have a schedule of when you do this periodically, that's pretty good. If you're a larger company, it's better to use certain types of tools to do this, you know, on, in an automated fashion on an ongoing basis. But at least you can take a few snapshots. And, and what I'd like to do is just kind of go over a few ideas for snapshots. So things you can look at on a periodic basis, if you think about it, there's a lot of different logs that you can take a look at like DHCP logs, firewall logs, endpoint protection logs, um, switch logs. So kind of go through things like SSO, Active Directory, you know, and you can kind of brainstorm as the IT department. You guys know a lot more than I do about which logs that you guys can look at, but maybe you make a list of the best logs and make some type of process where every once in a while, you know, like maybe it's once a month or so, or once every two weeks, you go through and just take a look at that snapshot and see if it matches up from week to week. So that's an idea of how to do it periodically and just logging it on an Excel spreadsheet. But if your company is a little, little bit bigger, it's really more important to get some tools, maybe some tools that identify active assets. And if you wanna take it even a step further, get some tools that'll identify passive assets on the network. So overall, that is the most overlooked item on asset control, asset and inventory control, which is control number one on the CIS framework. I know it's a pretty obvious one, but not a whole lot to talk about on this control. So hope that helped a little bit. And again, if you want to know which vendors your company should quote for a cybersecurity risk assessment, there's a bunch of them out there. Don't start Googling it. You'll probably end up with the wrong company. Instead, just contact me. This is what I do for a living. I'm a broker for all the major cybersecurity services vendors. And based on a few questions, I can tell you the handful of companies that you should be quoting for a cybersecurity risk assessment. And I can also introduce you to the right people at those companies and, and all oversee the, the quoting process and the calls and be on the calls with you. And the nice thing is, is that if you find a company that you like and you end up getting a cybersecurity risk assessment from them, that company pays me my broker fee. So you don't have to pay me at all, no matter what, at any point in the process. So no excuse whatsoever not to at least reach out and get my help on this. Don't do it alone. It's, it's definitely too risky and too many ways you can go wrong. So do that. I hope this video was helpful. If so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you on the next one when we're going to talk about CIS control number two.